Hello, thanks for joining me. So we're on the new Himalayan, what about this then? Um, I've just come from Patrick's Motorcycles who've been uh, very good, they've, they've allowed me to ride it, I've told them what I'm doing and uh, they said yeah that's absolutely fine, just bring it back in one piece, really friendly people, so if you're interested in an Enfield or the Kawasaki and KTM main dealers as well and they do other stuff as well, um, feel free, go, go and have a word with them, you could do a lot worse, they're absolutely they're a good bunch of lads and uh, they certainly looked after me when I bought my Classic so happy with that now as a previous owner of the old Himalayan I was interested to see how this goes because this is Royal Enfield's first water cooled engine and when we have a walk around in a bit you can clearly see the sort of lineage already from the old Royal Enfield Himalayan it looks similar but it looks updated less angular i like the look of it looks really good this particular color is in the black and i believe it's the top spec one um we'll get into the specs and have a walk around in a little bit but this is the top spec one and very nice it is too the first thing I should mention really is the, is the seating position. It's obviously sit up and beg. Very, very comfortable. Nice comfy seat. It's uh, quite a firm seat. It's not that, that soft and squishy, but it is. Um, you can see that it will stay comfy for a long time. You know the squishy seats get uncomfortable very quickly. Well, I can't see that happening to this but only time will tell. Now I do know that Royal Enfield have been developing this for quite a while and it is a really important model to them because they sell them by the bucket load in the home market. Um, if any of you have seen the, the recent Freddy Dobbs videos when he was in Goey, he goes to the Royal Enfield Cafe in Goey and um, very important bike to Royal Enfield this and I know they've, they've put a lot of time and effort into developing it as a true dual purpose a dual purpose bike that you can use on anywhere on proper roads you could go across a riverbed on it they were doing that in the launch video it'll, it'll take you literally anywhere it really is a true adventure bike and it probably hits the, hits the sweet spot of being only I think it's 452 cc so that's smashing so you're going to get economy and you're going to get real go anywhere ability on this i can feel already i just know already how, what a nice bike it is so we're sitting here i can see perfectly out the mirrors there's no shakes although i am going uh, reasonably steady nice big wide handlebars and the switch gear is lovely absolutely fine it doesn't have adjustable levers from what I can see but obviously the main thing the main thing of interest is uh, straight in front of me this new uncluttered TFT clock that encompasses all the things that um, the old one used to do now the, the the big thing about this as well is you can connect your phone to it and as opposed to like the tripper ones I don't know what they call this but you can really you can get genuine sort of Google Maps on this so genuine sat nav and uh, and follow it properly if you like I mean I've never used a tripper so I'm not, I'm not too sure what I'm talking about there but uh, this has got and I know you have seen pictures of this with Google Maps on it so that's good we've got a rev counter around the outside of the clock um, digital speedo and a gear indicator which is always useful and the fuel gauge is on the inside yeah you can feel the you can feel the urge in this it's 40 brake horsepower and nearly 40 foot pounds of torque so it's got plenty of low down grunt and it's perfect for these pothole ridden and speed bumps where I am now roads 
So yeah, because it's a brand new bike, it's not my bike and it's a ropey day and they've been good enough to lend it to me. I'm not going to, obviously, I'm not going to rag it and be stupid with it. I'll just stay, I don't know, I don't know what the running in procedure is. You know, below, say, 4,000 revs, I'll just go steady on it and see how it goes. But I can see that it's... Uh, It's got more urge than my classic, but then it will have, won't it? It's got 40 brake horsepower, not uh, 20. It's got double, so if it didn't go better than my classic, I think we'd all be a bit disappointed, wouldn't we? Now, the current, the outgoing model, is still available here in the UK, and because this is coming in, I believe there's some pretty heavy discounts being offered. So, I'm pretty sure you can buy a new one, a new Enfield Himalayan, the air-cooled version, the outgoing model, for sort of less than £4,000, which is an absolute bargain for that bike. As I said, I had one of them and I was really pleased with it. Again, go anywhere, true adventure bike. This one comes in at between 5750 and about 6 oh I'm trying to remember desperately uh, 6364 something like that that sort of uh, that sort of money would get you on the new one so it's 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 quite a price increase but it's appears to me straight away it's uh, quite a bike increase as well you know you're getting more for your money So what can we say? Comfort, lovely triangle between your, your backside, your um, arms and your feet. Nice triangle, really comfy, sit up and beg. Nice wide handlebars, great vision. Clock in front of you, the little fly screen, I don't suppose, I think that's more of protection for the clock than anything else because it's not going to do you much, you know, it's, it's, it's not like a touring screen, but I would imagine there's other screens that are available. Okay, what we have got, so we've got a bit more power than the outgoing one, well twice as much power almost as the outgoing one, lovely seating position, water cooled, um, TFT clock, mirrors are wonderful, nice wide bars, this has got the gold wheels, it's the top, um, it's the top model, I, th I think Chris the salesman told me that this was panel black or something like that and um, I believe you can get a tubeless version of this vehicle as well you can get a tubeless version of the bike if that was uh, of interest to you oh yeah I'll tell you what I've just been over a couple of uh, horrible potholes and it just soaked them up in fact, it just soaked them up completely. The suspension travels great. Oh dear, but unfortunately the heavens are starting to open on me now. So we're... Uh, a bit disappointing. They did actually say I did have the option of maybe coming back tomorrow and rescheduling and I said no I'm here now and uh, I thanked them for their permission to take it out and said no I'm here now I'll, 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 I'll get it done. But yeah this is so easy to ride you know that's the sign I mean most bikes are nowadays aren't they most bikes are easy to ride. And this is no exception. It's it, you know this would be. I don't know if um, I'm not. Quite, you know, I perhaps I should know, but I'm not really sure the licensing laws in the UK nowadays how it relates to A1 and A2 and full cat A and all this sort of stuff. But I would imagine this would be a great bike for a learner or a step up as a first bike. Absolutely super. Now, wouldn't you just believe it? Uh, yeah, the heavens have opened. I wish I could say this bike was good enough to keep you dry, but it doesn't fall in. It's not that good. But uh, we'll just do the best we can, won't we?
Now, as far as competitors for this, as I mentioned, I have had a previous, I have had the air cooled Himalayan. This is better than that for sure. It's a step up in price, but it's a step up in quality. Um, I've also had a few GS 310s over the years, and I like them because they had a little bit more power than the old Himalayan. But this this addresses that issue uh, with interest, to be honest with you. So so the GS 310 would, for me, would probably be out of the equation now. I'd have one of these. And I think this is cheaper than a GS310 as well. And you still get your three year warranty and all that sort of good stuff. So, uh, what other things are, uh, you know, uh, are competing with this? Well, there's the KTM. Is it like a KTM 390 or something like that? And there's a Kawasaki Versus, maybe. I, um, yeah, Kawasaki, that's getting a bit long in the tooth now. You know, this is a, this is a, although, nice bike but getting on a bit this is a brand new model isn't it so uh, i think again i'd probably go for this but first impressions are very favorable yeah i like it then there's not much wrong with this if you're in the market for a uh, for a uh, around this cc 400 cc adventure bike i think this is the one to go for personally having owned um, man, I've only owned GSs. I've, I've owned the little BMW version of this, which was a nice little bike, but uh, I'd sooner have this. I'm sure I'd sooner have this. It's, now it's been upgraded. You know, what I would say is that this, uh, this because it's an adventure bike and we've got this upgraded suspension, it's uh, like these speed bumps. It just, it just mops them up without any problem whatsoever it's uh, a really comfortable thing and i've just tried in fact i'm standing up now and this is what it's designed for and it's perfect i can reach the handlebars and i'm feeling like you know if you're doing off-roading i saw him going across this riverbed in the, in india somewhere i think in, in the himalayas and they're all stood up obviously and it, it it really is controllable it's designed to be like that either the tank's narrow at the back the seat's quite narrow at the front so you can stand up easily maintaining full control and it's yeah it's, it's gonna this is gonna be wonderful off-road wonderful off-road but i'm not sure what potter's motorcycles would say if i started scrambling on it so i hadn't better start that malarkey had i no they want to be very impressed i wouldn't if it was my bike anyway especially with only 40 mile on it yeah now i'm hoping i can get out this way yeah i think that's the main road so i'll get on this main road and then i'll start to uh, tickle back yeah a wonderful upgrade on the old bike more money than the old bike but yeah they've upped the game here this is absolutely no shadow of doubt about that it looks better it uh, yeah everything that the old one did this will do with a little bit of interest but the old one is still a bargain at that at that price at that outgoing price it's a bargain wow the wind's blowing it's blowing a right hooli now we've just had a bit of hail But if you're in the market for one of these, or an adventure bike, or, you know, maybe a smaller capacity adventure bike, and I know I've already spoken about the alternatives, the GS and the KTM and that, but you've got to give this a ride. Come and have a word with these lads here, and uh, get yourself a test ride on this one, and you'll love it. You won't go far wrong with this at all. I do miss me healing toe changer, mind you, and I know that's not suitable on an adventure bike. I'm not. I'm only really saying that tongue in cheek, but I love me little heel and toe changer. That's on me classic. I've got to get back. I've got to get used to using an ordinary gear lever again now. I keep thinking about it. Oh, well, this engine pulls really well from down low, like they all do. Um, I'm not sure about the bore and the stroke, these, you know, but yeah, it pulls really nicely from from way down low. And I do like the gold wheels as well, but we'll have a walk around it when we get back to the dealership. So, 
So, I didn't think I'd be disappointed with it, and I'm certainly not. What a great little bike. What's that there? Oh, it's a brush. Somebody left a brush in the middle of the road. All these bins are going over and the flags are flying. Good Lord, it's, it's a bit blowy. But we're used to that, aren't we, us bike? Because we're used to being blown about a bit. The army camera's probably not picking that up, but uh, City of Stoke-on-Trent in front of me. Gets a bad press sometimes, you know, but... You know, I think all big cities, there's areas... You Do you name me a big city where there isn't, like, a, you know, less desirable areas? And that's all they focus on when they come here. We're surrounded by beautiful scenery, the people are as friendly as anything. Anybody will talk to you, and you don't get that a lot of places, you know. You know, we actually talk to one another. Which is a bit of a rarity nowadays, isn't it? Everybody keeps themselves to themselves. But yeah, what a great, what a great bike have a tickle round on. And I would imagine, well, I don't doubt, I don't doubt for a second that this will keep up with motorway speeds. You know where my little classic, you know, it, I won't say it struggles, you, you know, I, I, I'm yet, to, I'm going to take it on the motorway soon, actually. Go a bit further distance to see it. But I think it'll do, you know, it'll, it'll do, I don't know, 60, 65 comfortable enough, won't it? I would think this, uh, this is good for a, a steady 70 mile an hour easily. Although, obviously, I haven't done it because... It's brand new, and I haven't got time, and um, I'm not near the motorway. But it wouldn't be right, it even run in yet. Right, what's not to like about this? Let's have a look. Well, look at that front screen. That's not going to keep anything off you, is it? It might be. It's just a little pod for the clock, that is. I think keep the keep the electrics in the clock from getting uh, getting soaked. I'm the, obviously I'm, they, they, they're about to be waterproof, aren't they? But I'm just trying to think what I don't like about it. The seat height spot on. I'm six foot tall. I'm flat footing it easy, both sides because the um, the seat is sculptured in such a way. Which will allow you, which allows you to stand up as well, of course. But it's sculptured in such a way that you can get both feet firmly on the ground. And I'm just, just a tad under six foot. I used to be six foot, but I think I'm shrinking as I'm getting older. Probably it's all this weight pulling me down, bank, isn't it? Hey, up, stop there, missus. Thank you. Bins have gone over in the in the wind. Look, oh dear, it's a what a day. I have a test drive. Good lord. So it's not the best day, but. I'm uh, very pleased with this, yeah. So I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of negatives about this. Well, hey, let's let's say the the price. The price has crept up a bit, hasn't it? We we're, we're not in cheap bargain basement uh, prices anymore. We're in mid-range territory, aren't we? And uh, so the, so it's a negative. But having said that, it's a better bike. So. Uh, what, what, what do you do? Do you pay a bit more for someone that's better? I think most people do, don't they? So that's not really a negative because, you know, I, the only negative is if you pay a lot of money and you don't get what you, and you're disappointed, you don't get what you pay for. But you're not going to be disappointed with this. It's brilliant. It's a lovely little bike. You know, in some ways, oh dear, don't let my chrome bronze hear this, but in some ways, I think this might have been a better choice than my chrome bronze but hang on a minute let me just let's just have a bit of you watch it on there um do i want to pay the extra money because again my chrome bronze is uh, substantially cheaper than this isn't it and let's not forget that let's 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 keep you know bear that in mind because it is important bang for your buck i'm very happy with my chrome bronze very very happy with it and um would i swap it for one of these well i've only just had it so probably not probably not but 
if I was starting from scratch and uh, you know I'd got the funds I probably you know if you got the money and you were, you were just buying having one bike if I was a bit younger yeah I'd, I think I'd go for this I'd go for this if I was still working and a bit younger as an all-round bike and there's nothing wrong with my classic but as an all-round bike it, it might be a better bet but that's not to say there's anything wrong with what I've got so you know you can all you can keep changing can't you for the latest and the newest but ultimately sometimes you just have to be happy with what you've got don't you I'm not, I'm not even going to say make the best of it because it's fine oh you can this is this has got some age I, w I wish it would run in and I could give it a pop but I'm not going to because that, that's not fair I'm up to 46 mile now, so I've done about, uh, I don't know what I've done, 12, 13, 14 mile, I've got a couple of miles to go. I better stop at that red light, haven't I? Good Lord, I don't know where I was then, I was looking at the next one. What am I like? Oh, he's an ambulance. Goodness me, oh well, well then I better stay out of his way, haven't I? I'll just see if I can get through this green light. Just go a bit steady, you know. Let him come. Let her come. She's picking her way through. I was going on my side here, is then? I thought she might. It's such a horrible day today. We've had hail, we've had the winds shocking. I should have left it really till tomorrow, but still, there you go. I mean, you know. So I'm going to get back to the dealership in a bit. Uh, I've just got to add my voice to the chorus of praise that this has received. It's smashing. It is smashing. I used to like my old BMW GSs. I say old, I had a brand new one last year. So it, it, was, it was the latest. And, but this is better. This is a better bike. I mean, the looks of the thing... It's it's perhaps not the best, in the, not the most uh, aesthetically pleasing bike you've ever seen in your life, is it? But it's it's so it's 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 so well built, it's so robust, it feels so solid. You know, it's going to take some uh, some braking. This is, and that's what it's built for. You know, you'd have a job break this thing. You could go anywhere on it. Did the, did BMW used to have an advert? that said you can go to the, go to work all the ends of the earth and that was something like a, I don't know in, in the old days or thousand or t or something you can go to work all the end of the year I seem to remember the adverts well you could on there I think I think I'd just assume beyond this is a big RT absolutely phenomenal little bike this is Enfield, they've got it right again. But what they cut? They can do no wrong, can they? They can do no wrong. Wow, and it's very pleasing. Very with the with the British heritage, the the backstory, you know, and uh, it's ever so pleasing to see them doing so well and offering things that people want. So long may it continue. Right, I'm just going to get back to the dealership now, and then we'll have a walk round it at the dealership. And I'll show it you up close if I can. I had a place in mind where I was going to stop and show it you, but uh, just at that moment, it was uh, you know I've got I've got hail and winds and all sorts of stuff being chucked at me, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't really ideal. Right, let's just have a quick look here. So here we are, home sweet home. Okie dokie, so here we are, Royal Enfield Himalayan 450. Launch 2024, pretty thing isn't it? Comes in various colours, dual purpose machine, 
steel frame. 452cc water cooled fuel injected engine. Royal Enfield's first water cooled bike. 40 brake horsepower, 29.5 pound foot of torque. And we've got a 17 litre fuel tank. So we, we're thinking that that should be good for, it should be good for a good 250 miles. 21 inch front, 17 inch rear wheel. And on this top uh, spec one at least, we've got the, um, we've got Seat tyres and we've got the gold wheels. Nice little short stubby exhaust. Shower. Upside down forks, and I think, but we'll check on this, we've got to show it adjustable rear suspension there, adjust for preload. This really isn't a pretend adventure bike, this will take you anywhere you want to go. So that's lovely. Front's got a 320mm tube piston caliper disc. Baby Brembo's. And the rear is a single piston caliper 270mm disc. It's got improved ground clearance over the old one. Comes with a centre stand, isn't that great? How many bikes do come with centre stand? And obviously a fully nice guard on the front with the beak. I think the beak started with the GS is the beak. We've got LED lights. And indicators. And we've got this new clock. With all the information you need. We've got the time, the temperature, we've got a tachometer, fuel gauge, digital speedo, and it is compatible with your phone, with Google Maps and that sort of stuff. Okay, we've got switchable ABS for when you're off-roading. Now, I think it's switchable on the rear wheel, but don't quote me on this. I'm not really an expert in these things, but I saw somewhere when I was reading the specs before it came out that you you can adjust the um, the braking on the rear wheel for when you're off-roading. 196 kilos wet, and it starts at 5750 up to about six thousand three hundred pounds now the water cooling allows it to rev higher and improves so it improves the power and torque through the rev range and it's got a six speed slick as you like gearbox it's got two engine maps eco and performance which i imagine I would imagine that's that. And you've got a USB port, so USB connectivity. And all in all, it's a real nice piece of it. Really nice, really pleased. Improvement over the last one. And I'd highly recommend, if you're in the market for something like this, you get yourself a test drive. And you could do worse than come to these people at the potteries and they'll sort you out good set of lads thank you once again for allowing me to ride it and, uh, like I said if you're in the market for something like this you could go a, a, a long way and find something not as good as this when we wake hear the birds and see the sun 
Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are finally right the future is bright Right. With you and I, the future is bright.